Hello everybody! Welcome to another video from Coach Oz with Profanis. In a previous video, we talked about the signal input, which is an alternative to the input decorator. If we now compare the signal input with the output decorator, the API doesn't match. So, in this video, we'll talk about the new output. Without any further delay, let's get started. For this video, I have prepared a parent component and a child component where we would like to have a communication between these two. At first, let's go to the parent component and see what we are doing. So here we have the app child, where we are providing the username, which is just the input of that component. And then we have two different events from the app child. We have the form is valid, and we also have the username change. For the form is valid, we have this handler, and the username change, we have this handler and their handler, the only thing that they do is just to console log, no more than that. So let's now go to the child component and see what we have. Into the child component, I have this very small template where we have hello and the username, and then we have just a form with one input with a form control name, name. And then into the child component, we have, this is the input, this is the signal input, and then we have two output decorators, the username change and the form is valid, or as you can see, we have an instance of the event emitter. And then what I'm doing is that I'm just having the form here with the validator, which means that the name is required. And then into the constructor, the only thing that I'm doing is that I'm getting the name, the value changes, and I am emitting the username change event. And the same thing is happening for the status changes. So what I'm doing here, I emit the form is valid whenever the status is valid. So this will be either true or false. So let's try to improve this code. And like we said, we will focus into the output, the new output. At first, we will try to convert this one, the username change. So we no longer need to have the output decorator and we'll no longer need to have the event emitter here. The only thing that we have to do is to have the output. And we can define the generic type. So the username change equals to output of type string. And if we scroll up a bit up, we can see that the output is part of Angular core. And please note that this is with a lower O, lowercase O compared to the uppercase O, which is the output decorator. So since we have this, the username change, we do not need to do any other change into the constructor. The code will continue working as is. So let's go to the browser to see what we have. Into the browser, if I try to type here profanis, we can see that we have the username change, which emits all the letters, anything that we typed there. And then we have the form is valid where we're going to see a bit later. So it seems that we have already converted the output decorator to this output. Let's try now to do one more change. I would like to go to the parent component. And as you can see here, we have the username change where we have the handler. You know what? Let's assume that we have a case where we need to programmatically subscribe to the events of the child component. How can we do that? So let's go and do the following. Into the constructor, I will use the after next render hook. And inside here, I'm going to use the child component ref. So at first, I have here the child component ref, which is just the instance of this child. And I'm using the after next render here, so to make sure that the child component ref has been properly initialized. So since I now have the instance, what I can do is the following. This child component ref dot, and as you can see, we have here all the public properties, and we care about the username change. Username change dot, and we have a subscribe. So let's do that. Let's subscribe here. And then, you know what? I will simply grab the username change handler, and I will provide it here, this username change handler. No more than that. So let's go to the browser to see what we have. And again, if I start typing, we can see that we have the events and we have correctly the handler. Nice. 
and it seems that you have already managed to subscribe to the username change. How about now if I want to provide some more RxJS operators to this one? How can I achieve that? So let's see the following. If I click dot here, one would expect to have the pipe operator so that we can chain our RxJS operators. But the thing is, the username change is not an RxJS subject. So if I go here, what we can see into the output is that this is just an output emitter f. And if I follow this, it returns the subscribe and the meet. This has nothing to do with RxJS. So we have a subscription. And please note that this kind of subscription will be destroyed as soon as the child component is being garbage collected or out of scope. But in any case, in our scenario, we would like now to have more RxJS operators. So how can we achieve that? So what we can do is to grab this one and wrap that into the output to observable. So let's do that. I will cut for a while and I will type here output to observable and I will paste this guy here. And of course, here we have a, an error saying that argument of type output emitter ref string or undefined is not assignable to parameter of type output ref string. So we have a problem with this undefined. One option would be to have the exclamation mark and the other option, and I think is the best one, is to just to have a condition. And now it's safe to have this thing. Nice. So since we have this, now we can have more RxJS operators. And before we add any RxJS operator, at first let's go to the browser to see if what we have done here actually works. And if I type profanis, we can see that we have everything here. Nice. So by this way, we can subscribe to, let's say, notifications of the child component. The child component and some notifications, which actually they are events, and we are subscribing to these events programmatically. Nice. So let's now continue and let's go to the child component. And we will try to improve this guy as well, which is the form is valid. Before we try to replace the output decorator with the new output, I will try to do one change here. So here we have the form is valid. And what we are doing for this is that into the constructor we have the subscription, and into the subscription we are emitting just the value, true or false, like we said previously. An interesting approach for this one is that the event emitter is, let's say, a special type of a subject. Which means that perhaps we can skip this instance of the new event emitter and move that stream directly to our output. So let's give that a try. I will cut this code, I will delete the rest of that, and I will just do this thing. This form status changes, and then I have just my mapping operator. And of course, this is complaining because the form is not yet initialized. So let's move the output a bit further down. Nice. So even before, again, even before we try to improve that, let's go to the browser to see what we have. If I start typing, we can see that the form is valid is true. And if I delete that, we can see that the form is valid is false, which seems that this works perfectly fine. This is not very well known feature, and it seems that a lot of Angular developers liked this approach. This is something that wasn't officially supported by Angular, but by coincidence, this works just fine. And Angular now decided to fully support this. So let's try to improve this guy now. And to improve that, at first we have to delete the output decorator and the form is valid. What we're going to do is similar to what we did into the parent component. If you remember, we converted an output to observable. But in this case, we have an observable and we have to convert the output from observable. So let's give it a try. So here we'll have the output from observable and then we'll have to paste our stream there. And if we go to the browser and start typing, we can see that the form is valid is true. And if I delete that, the form is valid is false. 
would seem that this worked just fine. We could even do the same thing the output from observable into this one, but the purpose of this video is to explain to you how to use the output from observable output to observable and at the same time how to use the output. So feel free to do this change at your own time. So to summarize a bit, what we have done is the following. We had here into the username change, we had the output decorator and now we converted that to an output. And then what we did is that since we are emitting here the username change, into the parent component we decided to subscribe programmatically to this event, which is our username change. And we also used the output to observable to convert this output, actually like the utility function denotes, to observable so that we can provide more RxJS operators here. Please note that we shouldn't forget in this case to unsubscribe, since this is an observable. And then the other part that we did is that we saw how to use the form is valid and utilize the output from observable by providing just a stream. So this is what I wanted to share with you today. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and do not forget to subscribe and click the ring bell. See you in the next video.